It's a journey back in time in Central America. Boys in overalls and hats, girls in long dresses. All of them are part of an intriguing community known as the Mennonites, ultra-conservative Protestants who wish to escape the modern world. Their school system is stuck in the 19th century. Girls on one side, boys on the other. They're reciting passages from the Bible in German. This morning, the youngest children are learning the alphabet. They follow the letters with a wooden pointer. The older children are reading the New Testament in Gothic lettering. No foreign languages, no history or geography. The Bible is their only manual. Paul, Zang, and Baden, and Gedächte abzeigen. Schrieben, schrieben, lehren, reacten. It would like me to all the sun would be here down. The children go to school starting at age six and finish at age 13, just enough time to learn the basics. They will not take their studies any further. That is the ruling of the community. But this is how we learn from when I went to school, when my father and my grandfather went to school, that's how we always have it. No, no universities, not any high school, college, or anything. Our studying is practicing by learning. You see what, Hannah, what the father is doing with his hands. <clears throat> Abram left school to learn to be a blacksmith like his father. He has 20 children. Three of his 60 grandchildren are students in this class. The Mennonites believe the more children you have, the closer you are to God. <laughs> Blonde with blue eyes, originating from Germany, the Netherlands, and Switzerland, the Mennonites fled Europe 250 years ago to move to the remotest parts of both Central and South America. Devout Protestants, they strictly adhere to the doctrine of a Dutch priest from the 16th century. They lead a life of rigor and discipline. There are nearly 350,000 traditional Mennonites in the world. They are almost completely self-sufficient, living in colonies with their own schools, churches, and trade. This isolation helps to protect them from the temptations of the modern world. For the first time, one of the most closed-off communities in the world has agreed to be filmed. In this private universe, life revolves around the Bible. Everything is systematized, even the color of their clothes. You just have to wear this kind of dresses. It's against our religion if we do all kinds of different clothes. Here, the rules are very strict. There are severe consequences if they are broken. Unfortunately, there are several temptations. A few months ago, Franz allowed a forbidden object into his house, a mobile phone. I know the reality. Now I do not feel guilty. I see there are so many good things in it. Behind the apparent calm, certain individuals are rebelling and challenging the very foundation of the doctrine. Wilhelm, the doctor, was excommunicated. And their mind, like a cell phone, it's made by Satan. So can Satan do anything? Nothing. Abram is against any change. Just like pioneers, he and several other families have gone in search of the last untouched areas of civilization. They hope to create an ideal community deep in the heart of the Amazon. I think you have to start anew. That's from starting from zero to grow. So who are the Mennonites? And why are they fleeing civilization? In this day and age, is it still possible to escape the modern world? We take a look inside one of the most mysterious communities of the 21st century. Thank you. 
Our journey begins under the Caribbean sun in a small country in Central America surrounded by turquoise waters. Nine thousand kilometers from France, situated between Mexico and Guatemala, is Belize. Lots of communities live together in this ancient English colony made up of 360,000 inhabitants, the descendants of the Mayans as well as Creoles and Africans. But to find the Mennonites, you have to travel deeper into the country, three hours away from the towns. This is where they chose to set up their home in the 70s. Hidden in the rural world is the colony of Little Belize. Here, time seems to have stopped. Cars are forbidden. Only horse-drawn carts are used to get around. The Mennonites are not used to being in contact with strangers. Although they are not hostile, they still do not understand why we are here. Our cameras intrigue them. Some even hide their faces, like this woman. Is it possible to go there with you and to film there? Uh, we, we don't allow that because people get frightened. And young ladies, where when they get pregnant, they get sick and so on. When they're filmed? Yeah, when they're filmed because they they're frightened. They they they're not they they're not used to it. That's the reason. The Mennonites reject all types of technology, but some of them are willing to face their fears. Franz is one such individual. He's agreed to talk to us. I'm born here and, and I am raising here the whole of my life. I have never been somewhere else. It's my home, home country. <laughs> I like it over here. I like the culture and everything. It's, it's beautiful and I enjoy my life. Franz is 36 years old. He lives on this farm, which he built himself. He's married to Elisabeth, and they have seven children. There are the twins, Anna and Katarina, aged 15. Then there is Agatha, aged 13, and Elisabeth, aged 10. Abraham and Peter are six and eight. And finally, there is Sarah, who is four years old. This is the norm for the Mennonites. The families are usually composed of between seven and 12 children. They lead a simple life. A few fields, a chicken coop, and some cows are enough to feed the family. The girls take care of the livestock. Franz works from home. He's a mechanic. In his workshop, he repairs engines for clients who live outside of the community. On average, he earns around $500 a month. His daughter, Katarina, is 15 years old. She left school two years ago. Since then, she's been working with her father. We have only girls, that's why she has to do jobs like this. If we had boys, big boys in that age, I think she will have to work inside, and the boys will have to do this job. This is probably a job for, for boys. <laughs> the roles in a Mennonite household are clearly established. The women take care of the home, the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry. And they are also in charge of sewing clothes for the whole family. But even in this domain, the rules are very strict. Elisabeth, the mother of the family, always goes to the colony's local shop to get the fabric she needs. There is no sign or advert in the shop window. Here, the choices are limited, but that is how the community likes it. The 
lighter fabrics are reserved for the younger girls' dresses, whereas the darker fabrics are for the married women. The men have to wear plaid patterns and a light hat. Everything is systematized. Elisabeth only speaks Plattdeutsch, or Low German. This is a German dialect used only by the Mennonites. Her sister-in-law, Margaret, speaks English, and she explains the rules to us. Yeah, that's we have learned it like that since my parents, my grandparents, great-grandparents. We just keep it like that. It's you cannot, been like that all the time. You cannot wear what you want? No. You just have to wear this kind of dresses. It's against our religion if you do all kinds of different clues. You don't have any rings no, or jewels? No, no ring, no, nothing at all. No makeup, nothing. No makeup? No makeup, no. Makeup is forbidden also, or? Mm -hmm, forbidden, yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> just all, 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 all men and needs, just have it like that. You like it like that, or? Well, we don't know anything else. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Eight euros worth of fabric for two dresses and a shirt. Here, there is no excessive spending. The Mennonites lead a life so austere, it is almost monastic. No distractions, no music, no sport, and no television. Their only moment of leisure is in church every Sunday. We were not allowed to film it. But, as an exception, one of the leaders of the colony agreed to meet with us. William, the leader of the community, is equivalent to the mayor. He also has seven children. He agreed to explain their doctrine to us. He invited us to his home for a meal. The only source of light is the oil lamp. In his house, electricity is forbidden. The decor is sparse. There are no paintings on the walls, only the bare minimum. The girls are seated on both sides while the leader and his son sit at the head of the table. The meal is conducted in silence. This is a tradition that the Mennonites have carried on for centuries. On the menu, beans, a simple vegetable soup, and sausages. It's like living in the 19th century. Well, that would uh, would close and we sound as we straight home. We sound the thing we own them. That's not all the new modern Russia thing. And uh, and uh, we can't just be seen home for us when we not home. We sound we sound more off. You need to find and when they they might not hear him down and the match for the bless. No, match that they bless no other. You might on slow and then change the bless. But on slow then. The law is absolute. Either you obey the rules or you are banished from the community. But in this day and age, is it still possible to maintain this austerity? Everything has changed in Belize since the Mennonites set up their community 50 years ago. Before, this was nothing more than a jungle. Now, the colony is spread out over 100 square kilometers, an area the size of Paris for nearly 3,000 inhabitants. When roads appeared, they brought modernity with them. In spite of their respect for the doctrine, some believers find modernity difficult to resist. For Franz, it all began when he had to buy a telephone for work. He's taking a huge risk by showing it to us. Before, when I saw a phone or something, or if I had used it a little bit, I feel very guilty. I feel very guilty. Now I know the reality. Now I do not feel guilty. I see there are so many good things in it. Franz discovered the internet and a new love for music. The rhythm of country music has revolutionized his family's life. I know the Lord is they are very fascinated. They really like their new life. 
it's a new lifestyle for us, really. Yeah. Before we had never any music, so we could never have any pleasure. <laughs> it's a good pleasure for them. They. But suddenly, Franz has to switch off his phone. There's someone coming? Oh, my brother is coming. Yeah. Yeah. You must hide your phone now that someone is coming. For my brother, yes, I have to hide my phone because, not really, but I don't like to, to see them uh, mad. If they don't see the phone, they will be more happy to me. So that's, maybe in the future they will start to know more uh, about the reality. <laughs> No. Even around his brother, Franz has to be careful. If anyone found out he had a phone, he would risk being excommunicated. This is what happened to Wilhelm, the community's former doctor. He lives just next door to Franz. Kind of a surgery room. <laughs> they sit down here, I sit down here. And then I have a speech, and then I probably would probably, check if they have pain in their abdomen, I would have them lay down, cover them up, check their... All the people from the village came here and yeah. sat here? Oh, yeah. Preachers sat there. <laughs> yeah. For 20 years, Wilhelm took care of all the families in the colony. He's not a real doctor. His mother was a nurse, and he taught himself by studying medical textbooks. He bought a phone to save lives. And I felt like I had to have it because uh, there were so many accidents, and then I felt like uh, an obligation to call uh, a taxi or to call um, the doctors. Or and I said uh, that was so useful for me, and I, I had it. And, and they were complaining about that, and they wanted me to, to lose it. I mean, and I say no. This choice cost him dearly. By breaking the rules, he lost everything. The day they knew that they would excommunicate me, the day before, I would say I had about at least 60 patients, at least 60, that went on the whole day up to late in the night. The next day I got excommunicated, no one came again. So that stops from 60 to overnight to zero. Since his exclusion, Wilhelm has been shunned from the community. He is no longer allowed to work there, nor to do his shopping there. Nobody speaks to him anymore. Now he sells tires an hour away from the colony. But he has decided to react by creating a new non-conformist community within the conservative colony. Pickup trucks driven by Mennonites. It's a surprising sight. Dozens of families have decided to change their old routines. They've just started their own church. At first sight, the loyal followers still seem to be abiding by the traditional Mennonite codes, but modernity has found its place among them. The sermon itself can even be seen as a direct provocation. The mobile phone has replaced the physical Bible. Wilhelm initiated the construction of this new church. Here, everything is permitted. Well, almost everything. Oh, yeah. They are allowed, vehicles are allowed, music is allowed, we are practicing music. And uh, yeah, that's all allowed. Only what is not allowed is drinking and all that, what, what, what the Bible says is wrong. This evolution scares the more traditional Mennonites. They believe they're losing their souls. Abram, age 43, is one such individual. He has decided to leave Belize to create a new colony in Peru, one that is more loyal to the doctrine. Yeah, like we will build that uh, more traditional and and the community so that they will be more, 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 um, I don't know exactly how to explain, but the people, 
more conservative, more people together. Father to seven children, Abram, a farmer, is going on this new adventure with his family, even though he built his life here. So this is the house, what I had built uh, at the first point. So now I'm, I want to leave it, so let for other people can use it now. If they want to change, I have a better one, so they can put a new one. And so that's how I'm thinking now. And now I want to sell it for with everything and the land. For Abram and his family, Peru represents a hope for a better life. The first point is uh, like there, it sounds like the soil and everything, it sounds better to work there and uh, having um, having more um, more uh, like more people in the town who will buy us all the vegetables and corn and soya and beans and all the things what we produce they will buy more so we could sell more what we produce that will make us more happier life is hard in belize for the mennonites Abram's daughter Elena and her husband live in this bus. The newly wedded couple do not have enough money to buy a house. This is an Apsa, and there was a monk. And then saying about it that all as a fail, and I'm parting a snail, and that all but Peru can all a smack hole, and that to a quarry cliff. They've decided to leave because there's no future for them here. There is no more available land. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in the Big land. Big land, in the in the house, all they need. Through the the smart, this is here, this lot. And here is the milk coffee. Then I saw one of them hang on half, and so I mean, all this meant to be able to come. Then I just got my control from them. The young couple don't have many possessions, so they want to take everything with them. Bowls, pans, and all their wedding gifts. Everything has to fit into these two suitcases. They are not the only ones leaving the colony. Around 40 families are joining them on this slightly crazy project. They're all getting ready for the big trip. All of these Mennonites have chosen an isolated location where they hope to escape from modernity, in Peru, deep in the heart of the Amazon forest. Lima. Yeah, here we would on the first place come, and then Eva, but here, in Pucallpa, then from Pucallpa, in Arizona, from Tierra Blanca, then this is what the Mennonites have always done. Migrate to the remotest corners of the planet in order to conserve their way of life. Six families have already left to scout out the land. They've already drawn out the plans for the future colony. Each piece of land has been allocated. The land has already been purchased. Empty spaces where everything still needs to be built, roads and houses alike. But this does not scare them. I can't pass the <laughs> Less than three months left before the big move. For Franz, leaving is not an option. Although he does not consider joining the dissidents, he is still tempted by modernity. Today, he and his family have decided to go into town. Really exceptional. Why? Because we usually now go, not go to town. We are planning to go to town right now. Some shopping. Yeah. Franz has called a chauffeur to take them into town. 
the Mennonites are allowed to use a car as long as they are not the ones driving it. They are headed to Orange Walk, the nearest town located an hour's drive away. Franz has a surprise in store for his children, ice cream tasting. For them, this is a rare experience. You want to get on this? Tinka ice cream and cone? De la Máquina and cone. Because we know our ice cream in our community. And if they went way into town, they like to eat ice cream. Yeah. Okay, the children savor their ice cream. They only eat it once or twice a year. Well, yeah, you know, try now one or two, so it needs to do it, actually. Sure, yeah, try now one or two. The children rarely leave their colony, so going into shops is a real spectacle for them. This is the first time Sada, the youngest child, has ever been inside one. She is astonished. It's the first time that she had been in town. <laughs> well, we have go by to a chip yard, but not stop in town and, and walk around like this. She feels happy. Yeah? But she would like to carry the whole store. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Franz doesn't have much money, he can't resist buying his children a little gift. They each get the same plastic ball. In public, the Mennonites have to cover their heads. They do not go unnoticed. It's a real culture shock. The children can't help watching the passers-by attentively. see all kind of people here, and they, they see it so different. They are dressed it so different. We are just all more similar. All the Mennonites are almost dressed at the same. It's not common to them to do this. But what goes on inside these children's minds after facing modern society? In the girls' room, we were able to ask them this question in private during a music session with a new guitar that their father just bought them. This guitar is forbidden in the colony. Their cousin Margaret is with them. She speaks English, so she acts as an interpreter for us. <laughs> Before this, Margaret lived in a more open Mennonite colony in Canada. She'll soon be getting married here, so she'll have to make some sacrifices. Do you listen to music? I only know Selena Gomez and uh, Enrique Iglesias and which one is the other one? Akon. That's all I know. <laughs> there was some more, but I don't know the, on the name. And you like it? Sometimes, yes, but now I now I can't listen to that anymore. Why? Because uh, I want to get married. And the first I have to, to tell the priesters that I will be, be a good girl. And I will not do that anymore and I will be a Christian. <clears throat> I have to say that all before I marry it. Because the priesters told us not, don't to listen to music or to drink or everything like, 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 like um, alcohol. You can't drink alcohol or smoke or anything. It's a bit hard though, isn't it? Sometimes, but not all the time. 
For these girls, it's hard to break the rules, even if this family is slightly more open to modernity. The more conservative Mennonites are organizing everything for their departure. The whole community is coming together for this special event. The Mennonites leaving for Peru are selling all their possessions before they go. For common and aquatic ban, going with fifth dollar here. Fifth dollar bua. Try down. Try dollar. And fire. Fire. Jacob has to sell as much as he can. Nothing is off limits, whether it be a simple bin or a plastic bottle. Everything has to go. Each dollar earned is very precious. This money will help him to start afresh in the new colony. The auction will last the whole day. Abram is loading all the agricultural tools he wants to take to Peru with him. He and 10 other families all contributed so that they could share this container. Yeah, there's a lot. We have to put everything together and together and together until it fits. The Mennonites are taking all their most precious possessions to build their new life in Peru. That includes tractors and machines to clear the roads. The country has a few things. They are not big farmers inside in the country. So that's why we think about we can care cheaper. We have it here and we care it over there cheaper than we buy it from Brazil or anywhere. The container will reach them two months after their arrival. There is very little space, but Abram has a surprise in store for his wife. He's going to take their marriage bed, the only memory from their past life. This is the bed, so that is what we have ready at once. Your wife wanted to keep this Yeah, bed. my wife wanted to keep this. She wanted to keep the beds, so she will be happy there. Not lose everything. She lose a big amount, but not lose everything. It's the last evening before their big departure to Peru. Abram's family starts to feel a little apprehensive, especially his wife, Elena. For now, their biggest worry is the plane journey. They will all be flying for the first time tomorrow. It's finally time for Abram and his family to leave everything behind. We had a big moment. Yeah. The biggest one that I ever had in my life. Abram's parents have come to support them. It's a difficult moment for his mother, since he is the first of his siblings to leave the colony. 
No, no, I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to say that. What are you? No. I'm not going to do that. Guys, I'm going to go to Hong Kong. Come on, bro. Yeah, okay. Three hours later, the family arrives at Belize City Airport. They are the first to get there. The others are still making their way. For Abram, this is where the adventure truly begins. It's the first time what I am taking the plane. That's why I'm telling my children. Now I'm waiting for the three years. I want to go with the plane. So now my children, all they, they're happy. All they can go with me together. <laughs> Long time when I see a jet in the air. Ah, oh, when I will go, when I will go, so. I love what I The other Mennonites arrive, seven families, 53 people. They all purchased one-way tickets only. Returning isn't an option. Now it's time to say goodbye. Abram's parents also came to the airport to make the most of their last few moments with their family. There is no kissing. A simple handshake is enough for the Mennonites. Every action is always composed. But this time, the emotions are running too high. Abram's mother breaks down. She does not know if she will ever see her son or her grandchildren again. Those left behind have heavy hearts. And those going on the journey are taking a leap into the unknown. Even the escalator is a new challenge for them. For now, everything is going well. The plane has not left the runway yet. The girls are looking at the security leaflet. And then the plane takes off. <laughs> Abram keeps smiling, but his wife Elena is a little worried. Their adventure has begun, a 24-hour journey with a stopover in Panama before arriving in Lima, the capital of Peru. In the waiting room, the Mennonites can't keep their eyes open. They've spent the night in the Lima airport. Abram and his family have not slept since leaving Belize. Lazy, lazy, lazy. It's a long trip, huh? Mm, it's a long trip. In Peru, the group does not go unnoticed. They received several stunned looks. The air hostess who checks in their bags is curious. She knows the place the Mennonites are going to live and asks them about it. Sí. Sí. Este momento no pueden, pero al momento que llega más allá, 
Estoy sorprendida. Sí, Ajá. sorprendida. La verdad, sí, no pensé que iban a venir extranjeros a trabajar justo en nuestras tierras. Ajá. Pero sí, estoy contenta porque todas las personas tienen también derecho. People always surprised a little bit. They don't know you or they yeah, ask you questions. Yeah, a lot of people. They are surprised. They, they look at. They look at us and, and so they're asking from where are you coming? Where you want to go? So what what happens? What's going on? And so Because they don't know you? No, they don't know us. They look people some, but they sometimes they, they think about traveling but but not so in a group. So many in a group and so many baggage. The Mennonites are taking their third and final plane to Pucalpa a town situated in the northeast of Peru, very near to the Amazon forest. They've already traveled almost 3,500 kilometers. When they arrive, a few local taxis are waiting for them. The Mennonites also attract some attention here. Abram and his family are headed to the hotel where they can finally get a good night's sleep in a real bed. Pucalpa is the entry port for the Amazon. It's the largest port for merchandise in the region. It has 200,000 inhabitants. All of the merchants from the surrounding villages come here to sell their products. Abram is seeing it for the first time. I'm here, look so surprised, so but looks happy, beautiful. Yeah. He immediately sees all of the potential in the region. Hello. Mm. Oh, they look nice. It looks so. It looks like they had lots of movement. Yeah, yeah. That's it all down on the fash. It's big here. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. Looks up. Lots of movement. So right here, I think here we can work like we, how we like to, because I see the people moving and lots and lots of people. So it will be a big, big different than in Belize, because Belize so poor and so. A little bit people and everything tight. That's what ordered over on the rapido stand. Abram has no time to lose. He left Belize with the bare minimum, so now he has to gather some supplies before heading into the Amazon forest. First of all, he has to exchange his money. This is Abram's life savings, 30 years of work, his house, his land, his furniture sold at the auction. But we sell horses and cows and whatever what we sell on the auction sale and so and then I got the money and so and then I change them for buying things more or buy my land or open my land and so on. The grand total is 17,000 euros. That's very little for starting a new life. So for each expenditure, the Mennonites regroup to work out where they can save money. First on the shopping list, mattresses. Yeah, all together because above 10, then they have a different price. That's why we are all together going and buying things. <laughs> the day is coming to an end in Pucalpa, but Abram's work is just beginning. He's going to be the first to scout out the new colony tomorrow. Asala manzana, vitamina, vitamina. Coma manzana, señores. Abram has booked a seat on the first boat to Tierra Blanca, the final village before the colony. Johan, another member of the community, is accompanying him. The trek begins. 
traveling for two days on the Ucayali River, one of the tributaries of the Amazon. I don't have any idea. I come and look and I, I see what, what happened and what's going on. And so I'm wondering everything. So it looks all different than I know before in, in Belize. So everything is different. But it's interesting. A few hours later, the houses begin to disappear. They're replaced by long stretches of forest terrain. But this does not worry Abram. Quite the contrary. That's why I'm looking for. That's what I like. If there's green birds, tall birds, high birds, that's what I like. That's what I look for. Why? Because that looks like the soil is strong and they have power. So they grow vegetables, corn, anything what we like to work on the farm. After 48 hours on the boat, Abram has almost reached his El Dorado. This time, the crossing is done on a much smaller boat. It's the only way to access the colony hidden deep in the heart of the Amazon. Almost no one crosses the river past this point. They finally reach their destination. There is no port and no pier, only a dirt track. They still have an hour and a half to travel, but this time, a scooter takes them over the muddy and slippery road. In spite of the difficulties, nothing can break Abram's optimism. The road is very difficult. Yeah, it's so difficult, but they have, they could change. They could change it. You have that's the first up. time. Yeah, we have to work, that's what we want. We want to work. Yeah, that's why we want to come here. Have to do everything, huh? Yeah, everything, you have to start anew. That's from starting from zero to grow. After two hours, the first house finally appears. It was built by the six Mennonite families who arrived here a year ago. Now we reach. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> There are around 50 Mennonites living here, completely isolated in the middle of this untouched forest. They have no electricity or running water. There is still lots to do. Abram and his family will first have to live in tents before building their own house like this one. He says one week he have work, and so maybe two, two, three days more, and then he have his house ready. Only two weeks to build a house. The Mennonites are seasoned carpenters. They make the most of all of nature's resources. People in Belize, a lot of times they, they say, how, how could it happen that we people don't go to school and we do a lot different things than they do? And how could it be? But they say, I, we say we work on the farm and practice on the farm. We don't go to school, we go to school on the farm. 
A little further on in the forest, Abram is about to discover his own land. He has been waiting for this moment for a year. Make mess of here, okay? Only a few meters to go. What is this? <laughs> this is the my piece of land here. Yeah, so now this is how we how we first uh, open. This is the bush. And so now, right now we will go inside. And there I could show you how I will make my house. This house is plus. This land was reclaimed by the community. Abram's first instinct is to grab a handful of the earth. Come in. To plant carrots and all the vegetables for this soil will be very, very good. Abram can already picture his new life here. On one side, it will be the house, and on the other side, there will be a shelter, and the vegetables will be here in front and on the yard, front yard, so when people come and they see, oh, okay, right here is a pretty yard and pretty vegetables. Oh, okay, happy today. <laughs> Abram dreams of rebuilding a community based on authentic Mennonite traditions. Like here, we will be more isolated and more uh, helpful, more love, and everything, it will be more together, people living. In a year's time, 40 families and nearly 300 people will have settled in this forest. The Amazon has become the last refuge for the Mennonites. <laughs> <laughs>